Hey guys, Jeremy, here at the YouTube channel, My Way MFG. Last video, I showed that uh, Joel had sent me this centerpiece that goes down the middle of the grill. I've got a aftermarket grill, a new one that I'm going to put in here eventually, but I don't want to put it in right now. As long as the car's not painted, I kind of like this rusty, gnarly one in there. But it would look cool if it had the chrome down the center. And then I can just put this back on the, the good one later, you know. But um, one of the reasons I don't want to put the aftermarket grill in, and I'll show you here. Actually, I got a couple things to show you here. Lay that down for a minute. This grill, although it's a new one, it's a very cheap one. It came with the car when I got it, but the plating on it is just terrible. But it is new. And I'm going to hit it with some etching primer and just paint it the color of the car when I go to put it on. I think if I was to put it on there like that, it would soon look like that. But anyway, here's something strange going on here. And let me show you. This centerpiece that goes down this grill that's on the car. A couple videos ago, I asked the viewers, what is that thing? Does that even go for a 40 Ford? I've never seen a picture of one like it. I said, what is that? A piece off of John Deere plow or something? And everybody in the comments said, no, that does not go on a 40 Ford. Someone's just put that on there. And I agree with that. But what I'm thinking is, this is an aftermarket grill, I'm thinking, from way, way back. Like, when the car was still on the road, you know, kind of new. Because this grill is not made like a 40 Ford grill, and I'm thinking this piece might have actually been what they sent with this grill back in the day. When I go to put the chrome piece on here, I was going to take that off and put it on. See this big gap I got here? This has got to be that wide to cover it. If you look at the other grill, see, this one is not notched out. So it comes together tight in the front so that that piece would cover the gap. You see what I'm saying? And then on this one, it's notched back, and that leaves that big gap. So anyway, have, have these all bent up before I ever use them. So anyway, I am wondering now if that is the piece that came with that grill. It's just something that uh, you don't usually see, but that is an old, old grill. This one's aftermarket as well, but I think it's stamped out closer to the original design, you know. And they had this wired on there with all this baling wire wrapped around the bumper. The reason being, this is attached in one place in the middle and they had that on there to keep it from swinging. You would have thought they would have maybe put like a little thin wire here and maybe another one here. But someone wrapped it clear around the bumper and tied it. Uh, that's some guy that was used to working on woven wire fence. I'm thinking it done that. But uh, anyway, here's my thoughts right now. I think I'm going to take this off of here. Straighten out that corner and whatever I see. This is held on with these, these machine screws. I think I'm going to figure out a way to get this in place a little nicer than they had it. Leave it on there, drill holes, and just put this right down the middle of that, just so I can get the look I'm after. And then later, this will come back off. This will get painted. And then we'll have a painted grill with the chrome down the center and the stainless pieces all four back on. And these two stainless pieces here, the little round ones, I've seen in catalogs where I can buy them new. So I think that would look good all painted with just a chrome and stainless on there, you know? Cause man, if you go to buy a good chrome one of those, it gets expensive. 
Same with the bumpers. What are we gonna do about the bumpers? But anyway, I'm gonna work on this today. Get these turn signal lenses in there permanently. And uh, I just wanna take a little break from the door. You know, I'll get back on that Monday. Today's Friday, by the way. So I'm gonna start here and see if I can get that piece off of there. Got that off of there, wasn't too hard. Yeah, I bet this piece did come with this grill. You know, it's just a strangely made grill. And it doesn't have the hole in it there for the crank either, like the aftermarket ones come together and they got that little divot out there to where you got a little hole there, you stick the crank through. This one, this one's just altogether different. Anyway, I'm gonna straighten out the edges on this, mark some holes in it, see what happens here. Actually, this is all pretty straight except for this one corner. It's right here. It's pretty thick metal. much better than that. I don't know how they ever expected you to attach this. There's really no remnants of any, any, uh, you know, brackets tacked on there or anything. There was like one right there that I ripped off, but it would have had to have had more than that, you would have thought. There's a little dent right there. Maybe I'll try to get out. I don't know what it matters, but. Actually, that dent was where the spot weld was. We can position that right down the middle. I think that'll work just fine. I gotta find a marker. I had that spray can of that uh, that paint that I was trying to match up to the car when we did the inside of the trunk lid. I just dusted a little bit on there and then kind of sanded it back off just so I had a little blue there. It looks pretty good though. I'm gonna try to get some holes in this. You guys ever seen one of these spring punch deals? It's real good for starting a drill bit. I've used this before also to set small finish nails with. It works real good for that as well. I can see where the center is on this because it actually has lines broke into it. Drilled eighth inch holes and I took a step bit, cut those out big. These, uh, these thread bosses on the back here go in there now. Had to make a little eighth inch hole, a little spring clip that holds that, you know? Right there. But anyway, this all goes together and uh, I'm gonna carry it over there and try it on the car. These holes down through here line up with them holes in, that I just drilled. Uh, I just took a grinder and ground the heads off of them. They were, they were rustier than hell. It's a lot quicker doing it like that. So anyway, I'm gonna position that up there and see what length bolts I need to stick that on there, I think. Hey, you know that wire they had on there? It was wrapped around the bumper and everything. I thought it was just holding this on. Well, it was holding these on too. 
that wire was pretty strategically placed. That guy was really thinking. He was really thinking when he put that on there. But uh, I'll get it back on there kind of like he had it. Maybe a little cleaner, you know? Anyway, started getting that on there. It's looking pretty good. You know, that flat piece of metal that I've been messing with. Been trying to think if it came with this, what I'm assuming is an aftermarket grill. An old, old one. Well, the grill's got a curve to it, mainly down here at the bottom. And this piece is straight and it's got lines broke in it. So it's rigid. It won't make that curve, which makes me think that it probably did not come with the grill. Um, I'm gonna put a couple splits in it down there so it'll bend in. That way I can get this together because that'll get thrown away eventually anyway. But uh, man, that's gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna shut the hood and open the door here in a bit when we get this all together, see what that's looking like. Then we're gonna get these lenses on. kind of took a rag and wiped the front of the car off a little bit get her little blue bit showing but I gotta say old Eliza's feeling kind of pretty she's feeling pretty good about herself she's got a new hood ornament on there now that it's got a handle that's not broke and that chrome piece going down the front I'm gonna get some wire and wire these two little little guys back in there but, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. The alignment's not perfect on that or nothing, but it will be, you know, when we fit everything together permanently with the new grill and stuff. That's all sandwiched together. I got all new bolts coming through from the back. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad I done that today. I just didn't feel like welding today, you know. Anyway. Let me see if I can get these things kind of secured back in there and probably call this good. See what we can do with the turn signal lenses. All right, I'm just gonna wire these back on there. Got some wire here. I'm gonna try to do it a little more discreetly than, what is that, number nine? Anyway, let's see what happens here. I just did it like that, like that, twist it on the inside. I don't think those will fall off there until we can get back there and do something different. But anyway, awesome. I tried to get the turn signal lens in on this side that I got done. Got new gaskets here. I can see that they go like that. And the lens would go like that. You got these three studs that stick out. That surprised me. That's that's kind of a strange design. Uh, but anyway, you got these little spring clips that just push on there. Until I took that apart and seen it, I just assumed there was going to be screws there. But if there had been screws, they had likely been rusted in the holes. So this is probably easier. Little concave spring clips. Uh, 
So I'm assuming you just push them on with the curve going down and the spring contacting the, the lens. Just like that. I got three more here for the other side. I'm gonna try to get that done by the end of this video. I gotta go deliver a bicycle here in a minute. Uh, my wife's friend that she works with, her sister left her little girl with her and took off. I don't know if she's coming back or not. I don't, I don't know, it's a weird deal. But anyway, the little girl doesn't have a bicycle. I don't know if she has much of anything. But I had an old bicycle out back. Carol says, go back and look at that, see if it'll clean up. And it did, it cleaned up pretty good. So I'm gonna load it in a truck and take it up there and we're gonna give it to that little girl so she can maybe get around a little easier, you know? I don't know. I aired the tires up, oiled the chain, all of that kind of stuff. I think it's okay. Nobody's rode it for years, you know? I got these kind of started. I'm just gonna figure out a way to push them on here. Probably what might work good here is a hollow nut driver. Let's see if I got one in a drawer or maybe a little socket. Still looser and shit. What am I doing wrong here? Maybe these go sideways? are tight now. Guess that's okay. It ain't gonna come out. I ain't sure I put those on right though. What do you guys think? Anybody ever done this before? Anyway, it's not gonna go anywhere. I guess I'll put it in there. from side to side and stuff. I just envisioned it going in there a little tighter than that. I don't know. Let's see what happens, I guess. I 
I imagine I'll come over here probably Sunday or Monday and uh, start getting that door more ready for paint. So it's gonna be uh, nice next week and the week after. I get that stuff painted and uh, get the wing vent in and stuff, get the mirror on. I would maybe like to get the door panels on at least for uh, for now, they'll have to come back off, put the windows in, but I'm pretty close to having them made up. So it'd just be nice if they were on there because we're gonna drive the car a lot this summer. And uh, the more interior we got in there, the better it'll feel, you know, but <clears throat> what I was getting at here within the next couple weeks, I'm gonna go around and tidy up all my loose ends, see if there's any kind of maintenance issues or mechanical issues I need to do because in another month, I'm gonna get in this and start driving it, and I probably won't work on it too much during the summer, once in a while, but not a lot. We're gonna get back to working on the garage and taking trips in this car and the 59 Chevy. But, uh, yeah, I wanna get that stuff painted and get it together as far as I can and start buttoning up loose ends here pretty quickly. Just got it hanging on there with the screw out of it. I'll get back, get the bulb in there here in a bit. But yeah, that all looks pretty good. Well, I'm gonna go deliver a bicycle, guys. All right, driver's sign turn signal. Should be the last of this. Got me a hole drilled there. Cleaned up around it for a ground. Cause that's what Bob Drake says I should do. Get this mounted with a screw and figure out which one of these is high and low and Put some heat shrinks there, we should be done. Liza now has all of our lights, except for a uh, license plate light. Man, I like that chrome going down there now. It looks good. Try the turn signals. Got that one. Ooh, oncoming traffic is gonna love me now. Yep, they're just gonna love me. I can signal. Let them know where I'm going, you know. I think the last thing I'm gonna do here is see if I can get this wing vent assembly out of this garnish molding. Uh, the one on the other side, man, it came out hard. I ended up having to heat it with a torch for quite some time to get that washer to come off of there. And uh, I'm hoping this one comes apart a little easier. Anybody that's been paying close attention here might have noticed I'm doing my very best today or this video in general to stay away from the welder and the bondo spreader and the sander. I've done that just about every day this week on that door and uh, I just want to take a break from it for a day or two and then I'll get back on it and finish it up. This, this and that door and all that stuff is going to get painted at the same time. And um, everything's got to get ready, you know, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. It's all got to get done. Yeah, the spring is stuck on there to start with. I wonder if I could twist it a little. That's not a good sign. That indicates to me it's probably going to come apart just as hard as the other one. All right, there's that washer I was talking about right there. Man, oh man. And uh, you can't spin it. It's, um, it's like a D-shape or something like that. It sets flat on the shaft. Pretty sure. It's got two flat, four flat sides on it. Yeah, it's a square hole in there. Anyway. Probably gonna have to spray it and beat on it and
when you're desperate for every last drop, right? But, uh, I'll let that soak tonight and come over here in the morning and see if I can get it out of there. Probably gonna have to heat it like we did on the other one. Took quite some time to get it off. Anyway, come back tomorrow. I'm gonna go home and get a bath. Been beating on that this morning. It's gonna take a little heat. Not gonna do it today. Wanna to get this video out. Start working on that tomorrow. <clears throat> My buddy Tuck just left. He's been a body man for the last 30 years. Probably longer than that, maybe 35 now. But anyway, I said, hey, will you come over and look at this door skin? Just kind of run your hand over it and tell me where you think I need to go with this. So he ran his hand over it and he said, that all up in there feels real good. And he said, I've got a low spot right through there. He said, if it was him and this back here was fine. He said, if it was him, he would concentrate on this area, do one more spread right there and uh, start blocking it out with a long block. So that's where I'm gonna go with that. Probably start working on in the next video. He's ran his hand over a lot of Bondo. Whereas me, I've been sweating pipes together for 30 years. So anyway, just wanted to get his opinion. I don't wanna to spread too much, you know? So I think that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank all you guys for watching. Thank all the new subscribers and um, we'll catch you on the next one later. Jeremy. My neighbor mowed his yard today. So did my son. Are they trying to shame me into mowing my yard? Maybe I should mow my yard. <laughs>